All right. Um, hello, Lindsay. Um, so thanks for coming in today for, to take part in this interview. Um, so really the purpose of this study is to explore the experiences of elite athletes who have Crohn's disease. Okay. Um, so it's a relatively unexplored area. So I'm really keen to, to get a sense of your experiences. Okay. Um, you will have been, um, you will have seen this information that I sent through yeah. uh, a week ago. So that's just the participant information. Did you have any questions no, I around didn't. that? Um, so would you be happy to provide your, your consent now yeah, if you want to have a quick read through um, that? Okay, Lovely. Um, so as we go through the interview, if there's any questions that you're uncomfortable with, any that you don't want to answer, that's absolutely okay. fine. Um, and also I'll make you aware that we can stop the interview at any point as well. Um, okay. And that's entirely um, free of any consequence. Okay. okay. Um, just before we start, is it okay if I record this interview? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, so just do that. Okay, and just to let you know, I'll be making a few notes throughout the interview, um, but largely that's in case anything crops up that we might want to revisit afterwards. Fair enough. But yeah. So just to reiterate again, this study is really looking at the experiences of elite athletes who have Crohn's disease. Um, so by way of starting, I'd just like to ask you if you can provide a bit of background um, about your athletic career. Okay. Um. Well, obviously, I'm a fencer, so I do my fencing. Um, I initially was just um, a social fencer. Um, I only got serious about my fencing after I finished my PhD, so um, it was in 2007 I started training properly. Um, and by 2008, I was in the top 20 in the UK, which made me eligible to go to World Cups. Mm -hmm. um, so I then started doing some internationals and going to World Cups in my fencing. Um, and um, and then I qualified in 2010 for the Fencing Commonwealth in Australia. Um, so I went into that and um, I've just been in the, I was in the top 10 until I retired this year in 2017. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so yeah, that's just a brief overview. I did do the Commonwealth again in 2014 as well. Okay. Excellent. Um, that's great. Um, can I just follow up that? Um, could you tell me a little bit about what a typical training week looked like whilst you were at that level? Um, it depends. It varied. When I was working as a lecturer at the University of Central Lancashire, which was between 2007 and 2010, when I first get, started getting serious, um, I trained, I had lessons three times a week, mm -hmm. which lasted about an hour. Um, so I was able to use the bar mechanics lab. <laughs> Um, and I did strength and conditioning mm -hmm. uh, twice a week in the mornings um, in our physiology lab. <laughs> um, and um, then I went training twice a week in the evenings. So that was probably a typical uh, fencing training week back then. And then I then just changed. I'd always try and do a couple of strength and conditioning sessions, a couple of fencing sessions. And then it depended where I was. And when I was lucky in UCLan, I had three times a week. When I was in London, it was once a week. Okay. But, yeah. So quite an intense uh, yeah. training schedule at that point. Yeah. Um, and just for clarification, you 
retired last year. Yeah, so from, last year. From, yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, so the next question, um, I was wondering if you could provide me with some background to Crohn's disease. Okay. Um, as in, as what it is? Um, more when you were diagnosed. Okay, so my background. Okay. Yeah. So um, I was diagnosed what, in 1994, mm -hmm. so um, I was 13 at the time. Um, I had my BCG injection. And then two weeks later, I uh, started suffering with my Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. um, I then, I didn't, they didn't know what it was for about six months. So I basically stopped eating and I became what you'd call anorexic. Um, and it was only when they were about to hospitalise me because I lost too much weight that they then realised it was Crohn's disease. Um, I then went on steroids and it calmed it all down because uh, what was happening is I'd suddenly get a, an extreme bout of pain and I was um, sick about 10 times in a very short period of time mm -hmm. um, and then and that's what was, was, was causing the problem and if I ate it was painful so obviously my solution was to stop eating mm -hmm. um, and then obviously I went on steroids it cleared it up and I had about it was only when I went to university in 1998 that um, it started to come back. Um, so I had a nice period of time where it was, it was, it was good. Um, and then in 1998 when I went to university, it started flaring up again. In particular, when I came home to see my parents from university, mm -hmm. my mum would make me a roast dinner and it would make me really ill. Um, so we'd have to call the doctor out because I was being really uh, vomiting a lot um, mm -hmm. and in a lot of pain. Um, so I'd have to, I went back on steroids, on and off steroids and painkillers. Um, and it was like that, on and off, for many years. Um, it calmed down, I suppose, in the early 2000s, but then that's when I went on to um, immunosuppressants. Mm -hmm. So I started some immunosuppressants in um, probably about 2003, 2004. And then suddenly I had problems with my white blood cells, so they had to take me off those and I then ended up starting being hospitalised in 2005 and then I was on and off in the hospital with it until 2012 mm -hmm. um, and then in 2012 what happened because each time it flared up and it got really sore and I'd have this vomiting problem um, it, I'd get scar tissue and it, basically my intestines were getting blocked mm -hmm. and that's why if I was eating something that aggravated it it was just blocking and I, the only thing, way things could go was up mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so they suggested surgery in 2012, so I had surgery after the um, Olympics in 2012 and had half a metre of intestine taken out um, and I was left, I, I didn't recover that well, um, it took me probably two years to properly recover from that and now it's the best thing I've ever done, mm -hmm. I'm a lot better, um, but it's left me with some issues such as bar malabsorption. Okay. Um, but my Crohn's is pretty good. Okay. So that's a brief history. Um, I did have to go on really strong immunosuppressants after um, around 2010, I think I started. I had to inject um, immunosuppressants mm -hmm. every two weeks. And unfortunately, by 2012, I was losing my hair and stuff. And I was having all sorts of problems, so I came off it then before my surgery. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's my brief history. Yeah, the history of the, yeah, the Koreans. So it's it's evolved. Yeah. Over over the yeah, years. Yeah, it's, it's gradually got worse, and that's um until I had my surgery, yeah. it was gradually getting worse. Um, but then obviously it's it's completely different now. I've had my surgery. Mm. I still have problems, but it's a very different problem yeah. that I had before. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so it, so it has left me with a bit of malabsorption because obviously they've taken out quite a large chunk, um, and it has left me with this um bile malabsorption so yeah which can make you feel really nauseous a lot a lot right. of the time okay 
So what does day-to-day look na- look like now? Now? Mm. Um, so uh, it's just uh, generally quite normal. The only difference for me to a normal person is I'll probably need to go to the toilet five times in comparison to someone who might want to go once in a day. Mm-hmm. That's my main problem. And also if I eat a lot of fatty foods, I will feel really, really sick. I won't be sick, but I will feel really sick. Mm. Um, and then I do get a bit of discomfort. I do get quite a bit of pain from time to time. I think it's from the scar tissue mm-hmm. more than anything else. But yeah, mm. I, have a, I am generally normal. I can eat normally now, whereas before I would cut back on fibre. Now I can eat whatever mm. I want. So okay. that's... Thanks for sort of sharing all that with me. Um, I wonder now if I could ask you quite a general question, um, really about what your experiences of being an elite athlete with Crohn's disease were. Okay. Um, it definitely makes life more difficult, there's mm-hmm. no question. Um, I think at first I kind of ignored the fact that I had a serious health condition. I just tried to train or, um, over it and just ignore everything. If I got tired, I just ignored it. I just carried on. Um, the only thing that would stop me is if I had a complete flare-up, I would have to stop. But um, as I've got older, and especially since my surgery, what I've noticed is I've, I'm learning to listen to my body. And if I'm tired, I won't train. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, like, if I was tired, I tried to push through it, but it would never work. I would end up ill. Um, so whereas now I've learned that, I mean, I, I did have, when I was training for the Commonwealth in 2014, it was actually an MSc student, an ex-MSC student of mine actually did all my strength and conditioning. Mm-hmm. And um, we would do the training, I think actually I was doing it three times a week at that point, and you just, there was no reason I could be completely rested or com- have done... Um, you know, there was no reason for me to be tired, but just some days, the weights that I could lift were completely different mm-hmm. to other days. Like, and, and, and it shows it has impact on my fatigue. And that's my big thing, I think, is the fatigue. It's having to listen mm-hmm. to my body now um, as to what, I'm enab- like, what it enables mm-hmm. me to do. But it does mean that you can't do all the hours of training. I would try and have lessons in the morning, my fencing lessons, because by the evening I'd be a lot more tired. So I would try and make my lessons in the morning. So I'd have to think about the timings of mm. things to try and make sure I could get it all in. Um, but yeah, I just have to accept that it was not the same as everyone else. Yeah. Um, which could be frustrating. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, it could mm-hmm. get quite frustrating. Um, my, my next question was actually about um, the impact specifically on training. Yeah. But you, you've talked about that. But something that you, you mentioned that I'd quite like to pick upon was um, the support around you as, a, as an athlete training? Um, because I wasn't a funded fencer, mm. so um, most, most fences aren't funded, so I funded everything myself, so I had, um, I basically used ex-students and I paid them to help mm. me do my training. Um, I didn't really have like a support, um, if you're talking about as in nutritional support, I didn't have any of that. Mm. Um, I would ask friends sometimes, you know, colleagues, because obviously <laughs> we work in sports science, mm. so I would do some stuff myself. Um, but other than that, I, I didn't have much support. Um, my family obviously was quite far away. Um, I didn't really, if you're talking about that sort of support, I, you know, I had my friends. Um, my family doesn't not support me, but they don't mm. support me, if that makes sense. They're not like those big... They really ever want to see me friends. <laughs> okay, so they're not... Um, have never been hugely involved no. in, in that. Um, I wondered, um, in relation to support, so you had a strength and conditioning yeah. coach, what was their level of understanding of Crohn's and the implication on training? Um, their understanding is more what I gave them. Um, right. They did do some reading, but they had no understanding prior to, to mm-hmm. me sort of wanting to go to them. But they... Um, the two different people that I had for my strength and conditioning, they all did look it up and ha- I, they took an interest. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was all learning on the go and okay. what I told them. Okay. Yeah. Um, I wondered if we could move on to competitions. Yeah. So I wondered what your experience was of, of competing with Crohn's disease. Um, okay, so... One thing um, 
for a while. For a while, it actually didn't impact me. But once I started to get hospitalised and I started going on to the biologics where you had to inject it, mm-hmm. the fatigue started to kick in a lot more. And I can't explain it. I still don't understand what went on. But there are some days, didn't matter what I did, I could not... I, I don't know, my body wouldn't warm up like it would do. Mm-hmm. I, could, I wasn't firing. It didn't matter what I do that day. I was never going to be at the level that maybe on another day I would be. I never worked out why. Um, so sometimes I, I added a psychological stress, I suppose, because I didn't know who was going to wake up that day, whether I was going to be able to fire and perform or whether I was just going to be tired. And I wasn't going to be awful, but it was never going to be that the best performance mm. I was going to achieve. So that was always quite difficult because I never knew. Um, I always said there was two Lindsays, <laughs> mm. and I never knew which Lindsay was going to wake up. Um, then the other issues was after my surgery. So that was really the big thing was just fatigue. But after my surgery, um, I would then have the, the more issues with the toilet because of the amount of intestine that I took out. Mm. Um, and for me, it was um, it, I started to get a lot more stomach pains on the piece. If I got really nervous. I would have a lot of discomfort and a lot of pain and sometimes in the middle of when it was getting really close in a fight mm-hmm. I was in so much pain I almost wanted to double up in the middle of the fight mm. um, so that started to have a bit of an impact um, and also obviously I didn't know I sometimes I had to run to go to the loo just before a fight or something and I couldn't you know I had no control over that aspect and that became more of an issue after my surgery mm-hmm. um, so you have to battle with it, but you live with it, is what you've got. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, those are probably my biggest issues. Yeah. I mean, did you develop any strategies for so, sort of managing? No. no. Okay. <laughs> if I'm honest. Yeah, no, no, that's absolutely, that's absolutely great. Um, I wondered if you had any suggestions for national governing bodies or, you know, international committees on how athletes with Crohn's disease could be better supported? It's a difficult one because each person with Crohn's disease has it in a very different way. So you can sit here and you can listen to my experiences of it. But if, if say, you were to have Crohn's disease, your experience could be completely different mm-hmm. to mine. Um, so it is very difficult to have like guidelines, I would say, for athletes with Crohn's disease. Um, I do think one of the things that I struggled with was... For a long time, I just wanted to be normal. So I never wanted to be ill and I would ignore the fact that I was ill. I think um, I could have done with people often reminding me that actually I had to listen to myself Mm -hmm. more often. Whereas I just would never listen. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think accepting that some days you are going to be more tired and actually having someone um, to to actually, when you are that tired, to maybe just say, it's okay, don't, don't train today. Whereas... If it was just, when it was just me most of the time, I would want to go and train and work through it, and I'd be angry at that. So I would train harder. Whereas actually, I looking back and I think I needed that person to say. So I think I don't know how they can support that. Maybe they can have um, the the coach just needs to be aware of it so that they're not pushing them, and so that they accept that there's going to be days where the fatigue is at a level or whether they can. Get, uh, they've now got a Crohn's fatigue scale, so whether the, the, the athlete can look at that Crohn's fatigue scale in the morning and find out where they are on that mm-hmm. scale, and maybe if they're at a certain point, then they accept this is the intensity of training that they do mm-hmm. that day, um, and maybe they look at that and implement yeah. that. So I think the coaches need some sort of awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, I don't. As I said, it's very different from each person. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, I wondered if you had anything else that you'd like to add On the topic, anything that you feel possibly we've, we've missed? Uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But I'm sure there is. It's, uh, but yeah, I can't think of anything. Okay. Um, no, that's great. Um, I'd, I'd just like to thank you very much for participating in, in the interview today. Um, and also to, to let you know that the, the final general um, findings yeah. of this study will be available um, within the next two months. So I'll be in in touch with with those general findings. Um, But that's everything. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.